Math and Beats. In this video, we're going to continue investigating infinite limits, but we're going to look at how we can use sign analysis of a function to help us determine what these infinite limits are behaving like. Let's take a look. Uh, what we're going to do is just look at a couple examples in this video and investigate everything that we could think of. In this particular example, we're going to look at over here on the right, limit is x goes to negative 2 from the right of the rational function x cubed minus 5x squared plus 6x divided by x to the fourth minus 4x squared. So, with a little bit of hand waving, because in the future, not that far from here, when we talk about the concept of continuity, we're going to investigate what's called the intermediate value theorem. And that theorem guarantees something. And it basically says that if your function is either equal to zero or it's undefined, then these are possible locations for which your function can switch signs from positive to negative or negative to positive. Okay, Those are the only possible locations. So this is something that's usually investigated when we investigate rational functions as a pre-calculus topic. But I just want to remind everyone of that because that ain't going to be discussed in depth in this video. We're going to say we're going to use that right now. So then given this rational function that we have here, what are we going to do? Well, when is it zero? That's when the, the numerator is equal to zero. When is it undefined? Well, that would be when the denominator is equal to zero. So we want to find all the zeros of the numerator and denominator. And even furthermore, we'd like to, if possible, find the factorization of this entire rational function that we've been given. So we start by saying, well, let's try to factor x cubed minus 5x squared plus 6x. Notice common factor of x, take that out, we're left with x squared minus 5x plus 6, and then notice we can factor that further, because this is going to be x times x minus 3 times the x minus the 2. So in fact, if that whole thing is equal to 0, well then, x would have to be 0, x would have to be 3, or x would have to be 2. So that takes care of the numerator. Now what about the denominator? Well, we got an x to the fourth minus 4x squared. In this case, another polynomial, we can factor out the x squared and be left with x squared minus 4. Well, x squared minus 4 is a difference of two squares, so this is the same as x squared times x minus 2 times x plus 2. And there's our factorization, but if we wanted to ask when that's equal to 0, well, then that would mean x is 0, x is 2, or x is negative 2. So we see here all the different zeros that make the numerator or denominator equal to 0. And hence, those are the different locations in which we call partition numbers for which the function could change signs. Doesn't mean it's gonna, just means it could. So then, in general, we could rewrite this rational function x cubed minus 5x squared plus 6x divided by x to the fourth minus 4x squared. Well, we just factored the numerator and denominator here. So what is it? Well, it's the same as x times x minus 3 times x minus 2. And then all of that divided by x squared times x minus 2 times x plus 2. And so notice we got a few common factors. And hence, if you remember how this all works, if I reduce the common factors and then just get rid of these x minus 2 factors, get rid of one of the x factors, but still left with one of the x's on the bottom. And this gives us x minus 3 divided by x times x plus 2 if x is not equal to 2 because of course 
we're still left with the x in the denominator as a factor. It still makes it undefined. So the whole purpose of this is that, well, we're trying to investigate the limit as x goes to negative 2. The x is equal to negative 2 is the value of x that makes the denominator 0, regardless whether we simplify or not. And what that's indicating is that there's a potential vertical asymptote at this location. Notice, as x goes to negative 2, regardless of the direction, the numerator non-zero. And so, definitely, there's going to be some type of vertical asymptote at this location of x is negative 2. The question is just what's his behavior there, in particular, as x goes to negative 2 from the right. And so, I'm going to draw a little number line here. Down here, values of x. Down here, well, if I'm calling this function up here, let's just call it f of x, then these are the output values of f. Okay. So what I'm in particular interested in is the location of x is negative 2. But when I use my sample locations, I don't want to pick them really too far away because I got to note that at x is 0, the function is undefined. And at x is 3, the function is 0. And if we want to throw it in because there's that removable discontinuity at x is 2, some over here x is 2 were also undefined, right? And so at x is negative 2, we also know we're undefined. And thus, I want to look at locations close to negative 2 from the left and the right. In this case, we are focused on from the right, so that's what we'll do. What's going on here at x is negative 2? What's going on there? Well, let's pick up a, a point. I mean, somewhere in the interval that's relatively close by is x is negative 1, right? So if I plug in x is negative 1 into the function, then my function at negative 1 is, well, remember, here's my function right up there, right? x cubed minus 5x squared plus 6x divided by x to the fourth minus 4x squared plug in negative 1 in the numerator negative 1 cubed minus 5 times negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1 all divided by negative 1 to the fourth minus 4 times negative 1 squared what do we get we get a negative 1 and then minus a 5 minus a 6 in the numerator in the bottom positive 1 minus a 4. Now notice, of course, in the numerator it's negative 12, denominator is negative 3. That's 4, but the most important part of all this is that it's positive. And so what we're saying is, okay, look, I just picked the value of x to the right of negative 2 that is relatively close by but I know my function can't change signs between those two values of negative 2 and negative 1. The only potential other spot I could change signs, first of all, to the right of negative 2 is 0. But I don't care about that right now because I'm investigating the behavior of this function as x goes to negative 2 from the right. So I could pick any value in the interval from negative 2 to 0. And it's going to take the same result. And that is this function is going to be positive bigger than zero positive 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 you say okay function is positive as we get close to negative two from the right my function is positive but i know that this function is undefined and furthermore based on the other videos we looked at as x gets close to negative two from the right right the function i guess we're calling it f of x here is getting very very large why because if i pick a value of x close to negative two on the right hand side of it we just saw it has to be positive right moreover the denominator 
is getting extremely close to zero. So that's going to indicate some value in the numerator divided by some tiny itsy bitsy number close to zero in the denominator. And hence that entire quantity must blow up to infinity or negative infinity but because it has to be positive here. It's blowing up to infinity. And hence the whole goal of this problem is to investigate the behavior of this function as x gets close to negative 2 from the right. And hence it's going to infinity. Thus limit as x goes to negative 2 from the right of our function which is x cubed minus 5x squared plus 6x divided by x to the fourth minus 4x squared. Ah, that's going to be infinity. And thus, that's how we can use sign analysis to help us in figuring out limits involving infinity or negative infinity. Okay, so moving on to the next example. This will be the final example of the video. We are given a new function here. It's called f of x. In this function, x squared minus 4x plus 3 divided by x squared minus 1, another rational function. And so since we are trying to find, in particular, the vertical asymptotes for this function, and obviously this function f of x is not a piecewise defined function, then we know that the only possible vertical asymptotes are going to occur for which the denominator is 0. In other words, when the function is undefined. However, we got to make sure that it's not a removable discontinuity or a hole at the particular values of x, which make the denominator zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this function and figure out where is the numerator zero, where is the denominator zero. Okay, let's just rewrite it. x squared minus 4x plus 3. That's the same thing as x minus a 3 times x minus a 1 divided by x minus a 1 times x plus a 1 just doing the factoring and we notice ah look x minus 1 x minus 1 they cancel so in fact this function is going to behave like x minus 3 divided by x plus 1 at least for values of x not equal to 1 because those are the values of x that make the common factor equal to zero. But because that common factor, quote unquote, disappears, we know there's going to be a hole there. And hence, this function, other than that hole location, is going to behave like x minus 3 over x plus 1. And say, so, well, clearly our partition numbers, partition, whoop, number, Numbers, oh boy, numbers are x is 3 and x is negative 1. Those are the values of x that make the numerator deny 0. And we're disregarding that x is equal to 1. So technically, x is 1 is also a partition number because it kind of makes the numerator and denominator 0 simultaneously. But all we're really interested in is because we know at x is 1, there's not going to be a vertical asymptote. There's going to be a, a hole there. And again, if we use sign analysis, okay, okay, these are values of x. These are values of f of x. I know that at x is equal to negative 1, this function is undefined. That's the value of x that makes the denominator 0. I know what x is 1. We're undefined. But I also know there's not a vertical asymptote there. The reasons we already previously stated and then at x is 3 this function is 0 okay so we don't even care about x is 3 because we know the function is not going to be undefined there so we don't even care okay so we're just like who cares about that it's not going to be a vertical asymptote there x is 1 also we know it's not going to be a vertical asymptote there because that common factor got removed. It is not making the denominator zero after I have removed the common factor. So at x is negative one, definitely going to be vertical asymptote, right? We can already conclude that. 
x is negative 1 is a vertical asymptote for f of x. Why? Because as we're about to see, as x gets close to negative 1, either from the right or the left, this function blows up to either positive or negative infinity. Now, again, performing sign analysis, pick a number real close to negative 1 from the right. Pick a number right in here, somewhere in between negative 1 and 1. Well, 0 actually is between the two's values. So if x is 0, then f is going to be negative. Because up here, if I plug in x is 0, what do we get? Negative 3 over 1, which is negative. So let's know it's negative over here. And in fact, if I plug in x is, I don't know, negative, let's just use 2. You could use any negative number over there. But if I plug in x is negative 2, then again up there, if x is negative 2, then we get negative 5 over negative 1. That's positive, and hence f is positive. So all this showing is that, guess what? What's going on at negative 1 for x? From the left, limit, as x approaches negative 1 from the left of this function, f of x, that's going to infinity. And moreover, limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right of f of x, that's negative infinity. Thus, for both of these reasons, either one is enough, x is equal to negative 1 is a vertical asymptote for f of x. And that's the whole point of the problem. Right, figure out where the vertical asymptotes are, and that's investigating any locations or values of x for which the function approaches either negative infinity or infinity. And if that happens from either direction, in this case, happens in both directions towards different infinities at negative 1, then that means you have vertical asymptote. So, sign analysis, really useful tool in uh, discovering functions' behaviors. Not only for limits, but for other things as well as we'll see in future videos. So I hope that this video is going to help you use sign analysis to determine the results. And we will continue with the concept of limits involving infinity until we're done with them.